Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Minecraft plugin development series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a new Minecraft plugin project without using the Minecraft plugin on IntelliJ. So the first thing you want to do is just create a new project on IntelliJ. Instead of selecting Minecraft, if you have that plugin, just select a new project because we're just going to be making a default Java project. And then what you want to do is give the project the title and also choose where you want it to live. So now you can choose what you want the name of the project to be. This will be the root folder for the project within the tutorials folder as well. So I'm just going to call it uh, MC plugin default. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and make sure that you create a Git repository if you want that. If you don't want that, then you uncheck it. If you don't really care about uploading it to GitHub or anything like that. Uh, for the language, just choose Java, build system. You want to choose IntelliJ instead of Maven. And at the time of recording, the version of Java that Minecraft requires at minimum is 17. So use 17 and then uncheck add sample code because we don't really need any of that at all. All right. So that's pretty much all you need to get started in creating your project. So click create now. Now the project is being generated by IntelliJ for you. So here's where you can find all of the jar files for every version pretty much of Spigot. So I'll leave a link for this in the description below. So what you want to do is scroll down to the version that you want for your project. I'm just going to choose the latest version, which is 1.19.3. So click that. So the most recent uh, one that I see here is January 12th and today is January 13th. So I'm just going to go ahead and find the Spigot API and then here's the version number and then shaded.jar. This is the one that we want. So we're going to just click it and it should download it automatically for you, which it does. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is move this file here into a safe place that we want to store it. And now we can import it into our IntelliJ project. Okay. So now that you got the jar file downloaded and you put it in a place where you know where it is, now you can import it to your project. So go to file, go to project structure, then go to modules, and then go to dependencies, this tab here, and then we're going to add a new dependency. So click the plus. This one's going to be a jar. And then we want to find where we put it. All right, here we go. So I found the file that I downloaded. So I'm going to click it, click OK. And now we've got it imported into our project. So click apply. And there we go. Now it's going to be importing everything. Click OK again. And now we should be able to use the Spigot library within our plugin here inside of our code. Now it's time to create the files for our plugin so that our plugin can compile and run successfully. So the default minimum files that we need. Now typically what you want to do is now give your project some structure. So create a default package for your project, to, your code to live in. So go to source and do new. And then we could do package. And typically you want to give this package a name something like either your website backwards or just something unique so that it can identify your code from someone else's code. So a convention is to do like a website. So let's say you own CodySimpson.com, then you would do com.codysimpson and that would be your package, your base package. If you don't have that website, obviously you can call it something like me.codysimpson. That's another common convention for package names. So that's what I'll be doing. So me.codysimpson. And now all of the code that we create is going to be within this package here. It's just a way of organizing your code. Okay. So we're going to right click this and do new Java class to create our D our main plugin class. And usually you call this class file, whatever your plugin is called. So I'll just call mine MC plugin default. You can call yours, whatever you want though, but that's just the convention. All right. All right. So now we've got our main plugin class here. So we're going to do extends Java plugin. And if you see this here, this means that you've successfully imported the spigot jar. So now you can use it. So click that. So now we can do stuff like have our on enable method. So you can start typing on enable and it'll give you that suggestion. So double click it. Now we're overriding that method available from the Java plugin class. And inside of here, you can define all of the code that runs whenever your plugin first starts up. So we can say something like S out. Um, this plugin is now running. There we go. And then we can also have it on disable if you want to. So on disable this plugin, this plugin has stopped running. There we go. So now we need to create the plugin.yml file. Usually with the Minecraft IntelliJ plugin it's generated for you, which is a big help and a big benefit of using that. But we have to do it ourselves this time. So click the source file here, right click it and do new file and do plugin.yml. And this file will be the configuration file for your plugin. So this will tell the Spigot server the name of your plugin, description, the version, and a bunch of stuff about the plugin. So it'll help you run it, right? So there are three required attributes for this plugin.yml to be able to run your plugins. First, you need the main. So this will define the path for where to find your main plugin class, essentially. So we need to tell it where to find that. 
So in our case, we know it's in me.codysimpson.mc plugin default. So we can do me.codysimpson.mc plugin default. So this will simply be the package path and this will be the name of the main class, okay? And then now we need the name of your plugin, so name, and we can call this whatever you want, but usually it's consistent with the project name, right? And the main class name. So we're gonna call ours MC plugin default. The last attribute that we need is the version of our plugin. So this is up to you. So version, and we'll just call this 1.0. There we go. So with this bare minimum, your plugin will be able to run if you do everything correctly and uh, it'll be amazing. But there are some optional attributes that you may wanna put, and I'll leave a link for this in the description below. These are all the attributes that you can put within the plugin.yml file. Um, but some of the common ones that you may wanna put is like the author, so your name. So you can either do like your gaming name or your whatever name you wanna put. So I just, I'll just put Cody Simpson. So author Cody Simpson. You can also do the API version. So this is the API version of the plugin. So in this case, since we're doing 1.19, we'll do 1.19. So that will tell the server that we're using 1.19 specifically. And then we can give our plugin a description if you want to. So a default starter template for a MC plugin with spigot. There we go. So these are the default attributes that your plugin.yml will usually have. So make sure that you configure everything correctly and that you have your main plugin class and that's all you really need, okay? Some other stuff that you may want to have is some packages for your commands and your listeners. So commands and event listeners, oops and event listeners and that's where all that will go just to make everything organized but again we have all the default stuff so let's go ahead and try and compile this now so usually to compile stuff if you're using the minecraft uh, intellij plugin or using maven in general you can use maven to automatically compile it right but since we're not using any of that we're going to have to compile it using intellij directly okay so to be able to do that we go to file again go to project structure go to artifacts and we're gonna create a new artifact. And this is the thing that we're gonna be building into a jar file, okay? So we're gonna click the plus here. We're gonna do jar, because we're building into a jar file. And we're gonna do from modules with dependencies. Because we have a dependency, which is our spigot library, of course. So click that. Then you can leave all this default pretty much. You don't need to touch any of this. Click okay. And you don't need to touch any of this at the moment, so click apply. Click okay. And now to be able to compile your project into a jar file, go to build and do build artifacts and then select the artifact and then do build. Now it's going to build it and then put it in a folder somewhere for you to copy into your plugins folder in your Minecraft server. All right, so our plugin jar file has been built. So to find it, we go up here to the out folder. This has been generated automatically. So we just open that and then we go to artifacts and here is our jar file. And so if you want to move it into your plugins folder, you just go ahead and right click this uh, and then do open in Explorer. This will open up in your file explorer. So just go ahead and copy this now. Go to your plugins folder on your server and paste that right there. There we go. So there is our plugin that we just compiled it and created into a draw file. So now let's go ahead and try running the server to see if it actually works. All right, so our plugin actually is working. If you look down here in the console as the plugin starts, it says enabling MC plugin default version 1.0. That's the version that we told it. And then as in the standard out, it says the plugin is now running, which is what we specified in the on enable method. So that works perfectly. So now if we go ahead and stop the server, it now says the plugin has stopped running, which we told it to say in the on disable method. Perfect. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick is how to change the output directory of your plugin artifact, your jar file, so that it goes right into your plugins folder automatically. So if we go back to file, project structure, go back to artifacts, go back to your artifact that you created. Now here in the output directory, simply change it to where you want it to be. In my case, I'm just gonna go and copy the path here. There we go. So here's the plugins folder. So click OK, click apply, OK. Now we can go back to build and do build artifacts and then build and it should rebuild it and put it into the plugins folder instead of the output directory here. And here it is, it has been successfully recompiled and put into our plugins folder and that's how you can do that. So you don't have to copy and paste it every time. And that's it. So thanks guys for watching this video. That's how you can create a MC plugin, a Minecraft plugin, just using IntelliJ uh, without any other tools involved. Okay. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot and peace. All right. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. 
So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.